Okay, hi everybody, welcome to Industry Project Week 5. Uh, welcome back from the break. I hope everyone uh, did okay with their assessment tasks. This week we're going to be launching into the next phase of the uh, course, focusing on validating your early stage solutions and business model. So this topic is around the concept of uh, what's called a minimal viable product. So the plan is we'll talk about something called high level product specification. This will be a representation of your minimal viable product. We'll talk about quantifying the value proposition as well as how to go about conducting primary market research. So these are the key learning outcomes for this, uh, this week's primer and, and workshops. I have to read through these um, before getting into it. So what should you be thinking about? These are the three basic questions I want you to be reflecting on as we move through the content in the primer. Firstly, what is the difference between a product feature, product function, and a product benefit? Second question is, what would make a customer switch from an existing solution to a different or new solution? And finally, are there any limitations in having a specific person in mind as a customer when making decisions around your product business idea? So this is something that we've been doing by developing a persona. Are there limitations? Are there strengths? What's your point of view? Let me know or let yourself know as you listen to this primer. Product, high level product specification. So I'm going to use the um, abbreviation of product spec. Uh, whenever I use the term product spec, this is what I'm talking about. So what is a product spec? We're going to talk about what it is, what it isn't. We'll contrast with the minimal viable product. Talk about why we want to develop one of these and how to go about doing so and going through some of the worksheets. So what is a product spec? What isn't it? So product spec is a visual representation. We've been doing some basic prototypes um, or versions of these already uh, in the course. And we're going to go a little, we're going to extend on that now and try to make something a bit more professional, something you're willing to share with um, potential customers. So the visual representation, it's going to be a brochure. In, uh, this is what we'll develop in the workshop of what the product's going to be when it's finally developed based on what you know at this point in the process. It's going to be done without full knowledge of the underlying details, but it, this is important to do because it's going to gain consensus within the team on where you're going now at this point. And it's going to be something, like I said before, something that you prepare to show a target customer or someone who is representative of your persona. And the point being that you'll use it to immediately generate an unambiguous understanding of your product. So the point here is not to sell them uh, this product based on the product spec, um, but it's something that you can, you know, something that... If, you can iterate on so it's not complete in the sense that you can easily iterate on it and refine its strengths and weaknesses so your product spec is not what we is typically referred to as the minimal viable product so the minimal viable product is typically what we'd call a prototype something that actually works and does perform a particular function um, that generates some sort of value for the customer. Uh, the problem with minimal viable products is they're actually quite expensive. Uh, they, by focusing on them too early on, it can lead to this sort of endless cycle of focusing on features, something sometimes called feature wars. It can also lead to a, a bias. It's another reason why we avoid doing it early on. Uh, one of the key biases that we sort of worry about is something called the IKEA effect. So this is some, an effect basically where um, when you build something yourself, you, um, you like it more, even if it's you know, kind of crappy. So and we want to avoid this. Um, we, so we don't want to build our, our prototype too soon. The next is we want to remain focused on our customer needs. And rather than emphasizing and dealing with the problems that, that will inevitably come up when we start to uh, design a prototype and get it going. 
Of course, it's going to be important later on. So when we uh, later on, uh, you will need to de design a a prototype if you're going to take this business idea further. And actually, you know, some of you could probably, um, if you took the initiative, even start to to go through this process before the end of this course. But the way I want to characterize it, the way we're character characterizing it in the course is that you'll be asking people for money to help you build the prototype. Um, so you'll be doing all the work necessary to validate that this prototype needs to be built, should be built, and people are going to um, very likely buy it if it exists. And just to give an example, you know, look, I've, I've designed several prototypes, got them through to a stage where um, we use them with users. And just to give an example of what, you know, why it can be infeasible to do this. Um, this is an instrument called a Metagrip, and look, this this costs at least five thousand US do uh, Australian dollars, sorry, to, to put together, and that's not including man hours. We, a lot of a lot of man hours was put into it that just aren't accounted for. Okay, so why are we developing a product spec now? The reason we do this is, and we want to address uh, key milestones that we need to validate in order to achieve that concept called traction that people want our product and that we can deliver it cost effectively. So we've gone through, we've worked in the idea space in assignment one using primarily secondary research. And we've accumulated some of the proof points that, yeah, there's a reasonable number of people who want what we have to offer. We think we also have some hypotheses that there's this likelihood that or possibility that they'll be willing to adopt our um, our solution. We we you might even have some ideas already that you can do it cost effectively. So this next phase is one of validation, assignment two, and this is going to be based as much as possible on primary research. So we'll learn about that this week, and the, the we'll start doing that this week even. And of course, the point of both of these stages as we uh, uh, do our secondary and primary market research is to accumulate proof um, that we uh, proof in order to achieve our traction. So, um, and really, there's three key milestones, and I, I think it's helpful to think about assignment two in terms of these three milestones. If you can achieve each one over the next three to four weeks. Um, then you'll be really well set up to write up your assignment uh, with all of the information that you need uh, to feel comfortable that you've um, you've got an ability to achieve traction, yes or no. So, and the way to break it down, I think a good way to break it down is to talk about different uh, domain spaces. So there's the problem domain, first milestone being to prove that the problem is important. Can you validate that people find this problem uh, important and that they have this problem and part part of this is showing also that there's enough people who have this problem that it's an interesting business opportunity the second domain is called what's what we refer to as a solution domain so is this the value proposition or the solution that you're offering something that's um, interesting enough for people to pay for it as well as switch from their existing solution, which also exists, uh, also uh, um, uh, includes doing nothing. And then the final milestone that's important to address is in the business model domain. So this is about looking at the different components of your business model and whether or not you can actually deliver this solution, this product to your to your customers to solve their problem in a way that's cost effective, in a way that you can generate revenue, profits after um, subtracting from your revenue, the costs. All right, so what are the objectives of developing the product spec? What are we trying to, what should we keep in mind when we do this? So a key goal of doing this, like many of the exercises, is we want to achieve a common understanding in the team for what this product is and what the business is. It's a team exercise, so uh, it's important that we, we all do it together. It should create focus on the benefits 
of the product? What does it do for the customer as opposed to the features of the product? And this is important because customers, they only really see the benefits um, or the lack thereof. They don't care about the features of the product actually. It also begins the process of prioritizing which benefits are more important than others. So you might have multiple benefits uh, and this, this is gonna help you focus on really the key benefit and potentially some, some additional ones if needed. It's also gonna give you something concrete to discuss and iterate with your persona, with people that you talk to. Um, you may also, and, and as you go through this process, uh, process, maybe other customers, people who are slightly different to your persona as well. Okay, so what are the key attributes of a product spec? All right, we're gonna go through five here. So the first is that it's visual. It's gonna be a series of simulated screenshots that might form a storyboard to show how someone's gonna use a product. We've done, done some activities that are similar to this, this concept already. It's we want to focus on the benefits and we're going to focus on the top three priorities of our persona, something you've already um, identified in previous activities. It's high level, just enough detail to show the functionality and what's, what, what functions, uh, what features and functions create the benefits. And the fourth is it hits the spot. It should resonate deeply with the persona. So when you expose it to them, there should be a reaction. And if they actually don't care about your product spec when you when you show it to them, then that's a that's a, a problem. And finally, it's flexible. So a key feature of this product spec is it's something you can change quite easily. And it's not going to cost you money to change it. It's going to cost a little bit of time. Um, you can do some tweaking and then show it to the next persona if there's issues in it or if you learn something new. Right, so how are we going to develop it? Well, these are some worksheets that will help us do it. The first thing to do is identify our top three features, functions, and benefits of the product. Really starting and, and focusing a lot on what you think is the most important one. So um, the feature of your product is really describing what is it, what, the, what, what is the, the thing in the product. Uh, very, it's typically a very engineering-related uh, thing. What and, and then the next is a function. So what does the product do? And then the final is the benefit. What pain does it alleviate? What gain does it create for the customer? I'll just give some examples again from this, uh, one of the instruments that I've, I've built in the past. And so this, uh, it's called the Metagrip. And basically the, the features of this instrument is it's 3D printed enabled. Well, it's 3D printed, sorry, which enables it to be easily adjusted. And um, it measures greater than a thousand hertz uh, using a unidirectional strain gorge. So you can already see a customer doesn't really care about this stuff. Maybe it's sort of a bit funny, but this isn't doesn't mean anything to them. It might mean things something to you, um, and it might be very important. But this is so. But this is what the feature is of this instrument. What does this do? What do these features enable the instrument to do? Well, it measures applied fingertip forces at any angle relative to the ground plane. That's what it does. And again, customers, they don't care about that, that function, but what they care about is, is what, it, what benefits they can derive from that. So what, what this does for, um, is that it quantitatively, it allows climbers to quantitatively manage their progressive um, climbing specific strength uh, at the fingertips. So they're able to train like a bodybuilder instead of for their biceps, uh, for their fingertips. So that's, and that's something that excites, um, excites climbers. Okay, so um, how do, the, the next thing that you'll do is create a visual representation of product, how it works, um, and create an annotated drawing for this. And this will be help, this will help, this is something that will help you um, uh, visualize, um, visualize this. You'll then, uh, the next thing you can do is, of course, try to verify and validate the product alignment with your persona. And the reason I talk about this now is, on the one hand, you should be able to pitch these questions to an imaginary persona. 
But these are also questions that might be interesting to pose to um, real people uh, when you start doing the primary market research, which you could already begin to do um, this week if you get ready. And so these are some of the questions that um, you should be able to or that might help uh, help you do this. So the final activity around the product spec that we'll do is to create a trifold product brochure that clearly outlines the benefits of the product. And it's going to have these, try the best we can to have these uh, nine characteristics. First characteristic is going to be a first draft of your company name and its tagline, the name of the product and, and the, its tagline. You should have some sort of image or picture. It should clearly identify the benefit aligned with your persona's number one priority. You might, if it's appropriate, include additional benefits, maybe maximum two. It should provide some sense of magnitude of the benefits, um, some sort of quantifiable impact. And you can use this, you can, for example, reinvest what you, you did last week in terms of the full life cycle use case. Other information might also be, be relevant, but of course, you just want to um, try to be as brief as possible. You don't want to dilute from the main message. There, sh there should be some sort of call to action um, that, that excites the, the, the customer. And again, it should just be fully aligned with your customer's priorities and resonate with um, the customer across all of these elements. So this is, I guess, a qualitative um, criteria for, for how, how, how good the product spec is overall. And what I've done here is essentially put these three, these, these nine different concepts um, in uh, a, a three column table, which could represent a, um, you know, a product bro brochure. And you could, you, you know, you're welcome to do it however you like, actually. And, you know, another way to do this, it might be you simply break it down into on one of my product brochures, I have an image. On another, I just talk about how the product works, features, functions, life cycle, and then final, like um, a, a big sell on why people should buy this. Okay, so um, take a five to ten minute break after going through all that and uh, over a coffee or a tea, just reflect on this question based on what we've just learned. What is the difference between a product feature, a product function, and a product benefit? I'll see you in a bit.